although we uh, foresee slower trade growth this year, it should still uh, make a positive contribution to uh, the global economic outlook. Even though we're beginning to see positive signs from the United States and Japan, these aren't going to offset the, uh, the situation in Europe. We've down, downgraded our forecast already twice this year. Our most recent projection is for a trade expansion of just 2.5% this year, about 4.5% next year, well below the 30-year average of about 6% annual growth. The, the overall economic outlook is uh, very uncertain. Uh, there continues to be downside risk that might make things uh, even more problematic, and trade uh, is going to be affected by this. Here you, you see the driving forces behind world trade moving from industrialized economy to new players in developing countries. The Doha round had been at an impasse for quite some time. We came very close to getting a deal in 2008, and then we went through a number of years where we essentially were spinning our wheels. In December of last year, 2011, at the 8th Ministerial Conference, the ministers tried to give the Doha negotiations a new lease on life. And what they did was they encouraged negotiators to try and find new pathways, new avenues to reach agreement or certainly to make progress. The single undertaking, this notion that all of these 20 topics are linked and that there can be no agreement in any one until there's agreement across the board, this has been set aside for the time being and members have been encouraged to try and find agreement where they can. So they're looking at areas where it's easier to come ahead and, and, and get some kind of a deal. Trade facilitation, the idea of achieving greater harmony and transparency in customs procedures is something on which all members agree. The question is how to ensure developing countries have the capacity to implement any new rules. We're seeing as well many issues in agriculture, a process of greater transparency to the way in which import quotas are administrated. We're looking at a way to see um, whether or not we can follow through on a commitment made in 2005 to phase out all forms of export competition in agriculture. We're looking at a couple of other things as well, a way in which we can ensure that developing countries can stockpile food for emergencies. Uh, these are three issues that are subject of discussion now, and we have as well some issues of importance to LDCs duty-free, quota-free treatment of LDC imports. The cotton issue is extremely important. On 30th of March, we basically confirmed the decision that has been taken by the ministers. It is really about making procurement open. It is to create uh, transparent processes. The decision can be adopted. It is. It uh, will yield between 80 and 100 billion US dollars a year in benefits uh, through opening up government procurement. There are also uh, a number of parties under accession process, such as China, Jordan and Ukraine, and we hope to see them join the government procurement very shortly. The decision is really uh, all about uh, streamlining and strengthening, but making also much more operational uh, modalities that were decided by members in 2002. 
to accelerate and facilitate LDC's accession to WTO. Those modalities were really strengthened uh, and made much more operational, uh, but in, in four ways, I would say. Uh, first of all, by providing benchmarks benchmarks in terms of market access in, uh, in agriculture uh, products, in non-agriculture products, and even in services, give them a range, an average and a range of what should be expected from them. A second benefit that these modalities, these new modalities bring to the LDCs, it is by increasing the transparency. What members decided in July, they really called upon members to avoid reopening accession negotiations, market access negotiations, once they would have they, they had been completed for LDCs. And the fourth and the last element, and which is very important, has to do with additional technical assistance. Rules of the game, uh, whether in the trade sphere, in the economic sphere, in the environmental or food security spheres, and indeed across uh, all areas of international policy making, are in uh, need of adjustment. The climate negotiations are in crisis. Greater food insecurity and rising food prices around the world. A few other examples where the international community cannot ignore that the only path to address these issues is true cooperation and multilateralism. We still need to find the best way to work and more importantly to address global problems together. Is multilateralism that crisis? Yes. Um, is it something that we believe is going to disappear? No. Uh, at the end of the day, we should remember WTO is all about its members, whether the members themselves hold responsibility and obligation to drive decision and consensus together. So I'm cautiously optimistic, however, I think more commitment is required by all members. I'm rather fascinated by this public forum. Uh, which every year gets larger and larger. And then as I walk through the atrium trying to get a coffee, I run into all my friends who come here because everyone comes here. So I would say it's a big success. The initiative of the Youth Ambassador Program was taken by the WTO to involve young people uh, in international governance issues and to raise awareness amongst them in these topics. For me it's really important to be a Youth Ambassador because it's like I'm a young people's voice and all the ideas I'm going to present here, it's sort of a representation of all other young people around the world, so it's really important. As a youth ambassador, what I plan to do is to make use of the uh, demographic change that has happened in India recently to uh, perhaps organize discussion forums, debates and get their views on how they think India can contribute towards uh, global development. There's a number of important things on the agenda for next year. We will have the fourth global review of Aid for Trade. So we'll have heads of important uh, multilateral and regional organizations here in July. That's very important. 
Uh, a new DG will come on uh, on the 1st of September and that process will begin uh, in earnest with the nomination period in, in December of this year uh, and that will carry on till about to hopefully the end of May when a new DG will be selected by the members. We will have as well at the end of the year, um, in early December, a ministerial conference, our ninth ministerial conference will be held in Bali. The agenda for that meeting is not in any way set. Uh, there are delegations that would like to see a negotiated outcome uh, on a range of different topics, some of them related to the Doha round, some of them not. Whether that can be achieved is, is anybody's guess at the moment, but that's certainly an objective that some countries have, have put forward. In addition to all of that, we will be keeping a very close eye on developments in the trading system. We've been doing that since the onset of the crisis, and uh, this has been an extremely important tool for governments uh, as they try and analyze uh, going forward uh, the best way to, to extricate ourselves from these very, very difficult economic conditions. So keeping trade open is going to be something that we're going to be focusing on again next year.